This is Kimberly Quinn, host of the Minecraft podcast, and I can't tell you how much fun I have had doing this podcast. I, I started when the world closed over the pandemic in, a, in an attempt to spread some positivity out there and give people some strategies to enhance their own well-being and reduce anxiety and all that. Now, two years later, we're still going strong and now listened to by 52 countries across the world. And I've even helped some of my students get going with their own podcasts. It's super easy to do. And I'll tell you, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. I'll just explain for you. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It is a ball. Start today. Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another exciting Minecraft discussion. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I'm so happy to be here today to talk about self-acceptance today, meaning we don't put it off to tomorrow, we don't put it off one more minute. I mean, the first real thing to ask ourselves is, why Why is it so difficult for many of us to look in the mirror? You know, and, and, and without critiquing, you know, especially me at a fabulous 57, I'm thinking of people in my age range with, oh, there's more gray hair, there's a wrinkle, there's a sag. You know, why, why is it so difficult to look in the mirror and just say, you are gorgeous? Why is that so hard? You know, a lot of us will tell ourselves, maybe not uh, consciously, we're going to get to that in a second, but, you know, I'll accept myself when I'm in the body beautiful, you know, when I'm 20, when I'm 25 pounds less, when I got rid of that belly fat, when I'm in better shape, um, you know, and then there's all the, you know, not accepting ourselves around, uh, you know, especially in this time, uh, mid midlife, right? I, I haven't gotten as far as I wanted to. I thought I'd be farther than this. What's the matter with me? I can't believe I'm starting over at, you know, 35, 45, 55, 65. I thought I had more retirement saved. What's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? My house isn't good enough. Maybe I'm not even in a house. Why am I still renting at whatever age? And it, <clears throat> it can be very, very difficult when we've got all that dialogue going on in the unconscious to then actually look in the mirror and see someone we like and love. And <clears throat> one reason we find our, ourselves in this place in our seasoned adulthood, or those listeners who are in your 20s and 30s, it's all going on then too, usually. Um, is what's in the vault. And, and as I've mentioned in, in other uh, episodes, roughly 96% of everything we say and do in one day, every day, is coming from the unconscious mind. And even though Freud got, you know, quite a bad rap for, you know, this theory and that theory and a cigar is a, a cigar and all that stuff, I don't think anyone can dispute his uh, work as far as the discovery of the unconscious mind because, the power of the un unconscious mind is something we've just begun to tap into. And in reality, the unconscious mind truly drives the bus. So we're walking around every day, again, me remember that 96%, not always understanding why we're attracting this and that, why this one's treating us this way and that one's treating us this way, why we're treating ourselves this way. And it's because of this internal, di this negative internal dialogue that's come from ourselves. It's come from the people who are around early on in our lives. Remember, unconscious, we are not able to access it. So we don't know who said what and who said what to who and, and, and what the messages exactly were. We only know by how we feel. And for me, I know, as many of you know with my backstory, I grew up in a very shame-filled, shame-based, you know, it's very turbulent, you know, uh, childhood situation. And so without knowing, you know, what was said, you know, like from three years old under, it's the feeling, it's just this warm wave. Shame is like a warm wave that for me, that just goes right across, right across my chest area, you know, and sort of kind of in cahoots with all that dialogue that was said to us as, as young kids, we also begin to form agreements as children. And though I'm not directly quoting anybody, Mike, uh, Miguel Ruiz just popped in my mind barely this second. 
who's the author of the four agreements. That actually was not my plan this morning. But I, since I read voraciously, I just I have like all kinds of little files in my head that jump out on occasion. And it fits here beautifully because Miguel Ruiz talks a lot about how we actually form agreements because the nature of a child is to is to please, you know, especially the, the the littler they are, right? The smaller they are, because on some level, even though they can't put language to it, they know that their very survival is dependent on usually it's their parents. It might be a, a grandparent or some kind of swap. So somebody got swapped out there, but typically it's our parents, and they instinctively know that you know their 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 survival depends on that. So they and they also obviously are new to the world. So there's this an inherent consciousness of this person is meant to guide me and like I can believe them and trust them and what they say is true. So when they say something, you know, and all the somethings about you're not good enough, all the ways you don't measure up, you didn't do this right, you didn't do that right, man, you really can't sing. You better focus on something else later in your life because that ain't going to be it. And all this, and, and so we actually solidify and form agreements. So we are as little kids, we are actually part of the part of our own programming by uh, buying uh, by agreeing to these messages it can also work for the positive, though it tends to it tends to be a, an awful lot of negative there. Um, and the limbic system limbic system is involved, which is emotional headquarters and tends to, you know, be the area where the worry circuit is and the threat circuit is and all that stuff. And all of that is involved with solidifying these messages and us confirming them ourselves. So the agreements are formed and they continue to form and strengthen because this is how it works. And so the unconscious is the unconscious kind of filters out things all day long. Again, unconscious, not aware of it. So we're walking around doing our day, going to work, meeting somebody for lunch, out in the world looking in your window shopping and hearing conversations next to us that remind us of something going on in our own life. Maybe somebody's talking about their belly fat or who knows what. And, and, and the filter, this is just how the brain works because the, it's called confirmation bias. The brain automatically, because this is a time saver and also has to do with survival, seeks out information that it already ag agrees with that, which we already believe to be true confirmation bias. And we hear it a lot. We talk about politics and, you know, whatever else going on in the world. It's also true when it comes to how we think and feel and believe about ourselves. Uh, we will we'll actually seek out if, if we were taught that we weren't, you know, you know, smart enough. You know, the so-and-so cousin is the one who's really going to make it and, you know, good for you. Why don't you get, you know, pick up a trade because... And disclaimer, we need everybody. I'm not saying that. I'm talking. I'm actually coming up with with messages I that I've heard through my childhood. That's where my examples are coming from, um, in our family. You know, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Um, and then as grown ups, here's the thing: is that stuff plays out, and and then you know some of it might come into consciousness a little bit later on, but it's kind of like. They say like the tip of the iceberg, the majority of those messages can't be seen. It's beneath the surface. And <clears throat> this also goes into, you know, we've talked about in other, in other shows that this also rolls into, we, we actually teach people how to treat us. Because you've heard out in the world, oh, she puts this out there. He puts that out there. Yes, we're putting out there all kinds of vibes and energy. I mean, think of it this way. You've, I'm sure you've met somebody, um, who has really low self-esteem, low self-confidence. You might not even know the person. They can walk in the room. You're at a social thing with somebody else and this person, and you, and then they come over and so-and-so says, oh, let me introduce her or him to you or them to you. And, and you would even, obviously you would still be kind and you can still pick up the vibe that this person is saying that they just don't have a, they don't have a wall, like that natural bubble, that natural orb of boundary around them. And so they just put out, walk on me, don't take me seriously, don't value my opinion. And it's, and you know, for a plethora of reasons that happened during their childhood. But I know I've had that experience. You can just, you know, there's people put it out there, just go ahead and walk on me or whatever. And then the reverse is true. And the thing is, all of that is coming from the unconscious mind. So here's the thing, in order to reprogram because remember, 96%. So if we don't do anything about it and keep on going 
Like you don't do anything about it today. Then it's tomorrow. Then it's the next day. Then another week went by. Then another month went by. Then a year went by. Then your life went by, right? So the time is now to reprogram that stuff. And one of the most effective ways is to actually do vis- visualization. We can walk around affirming to, and that helps. It helps chip away at it to talk back to it whenever it comes into consciousness. And to actually visualize, visualizing is very, very powerful. I actually just did an exercise myself this morning. It doesn't take very long. It can take, well, it can take as long as you want it to take. You can do literally one minute in the morning by just closing your eyes and, um, and you can, and there are also guided meditations out there. But the thing is, the brain does not know the difference be, between something that was actually said to you or happened to you and what you imagine to be said to you or to happen to you. That's key. It doesn't know. The unconscious mind is running on autopilot. Autopilot is bad. This is not the conscious, rationally thinking brain that says, no, that's not really true. Whoever told you you couldn't sing, they're talking about when you were four or six or seven, which was dumb to say to you anyway. But wow, I mean, your voice is of an angel. I mean, it, or, or, you know, and we can actually visualize, or if it's um, being super successful monetarily, somebody said, oh, you're not going to amount to anything. It's your cousin who's the smart one. Or picture yourself going back to school or whatever it is. But here's the thing. It can't just be, um, it can't just be like the picture. I mean, the picture is important. Look at the picture in your mind's eye. And the real key thing is to change those thoughts into belief system because thoughts are the precursor to beliefs. So it's like kind of like if you're a little thought, it's like, well, when I grow up, I want to be a belief because the beliefs of the unconscious mind are what are dictating your life. And again, your life isn't going to change until those beliefs change and they come from thoughts. So we have to, we have to grow thoughts like dumping miracle grow on them. So we talk back to stuff all day in the car, wherever you are, say it out loud. I'm smart. I'm this, I'm that, whatever the thing is, the weight, whatever it is, but visualize how you actually are going to feel when you're at your fighting weight. You're actually going to, let's say it's self-worth. There's a lot of people out there really trying to get that feeling of original worthiness back to feel that they're enough. In order to really get there and feel enough, you have to do your very, very, very best, very best within your mind's eye to picture what you will feel like, what your life will look like once you're feeling worthy, picture yourself at work, raising your hand in a meeting, picture yourself at work, um, make taking the, inif- the initiative to, to get a couple people to go to lunch with you. Take the, take the, uh, or, or visualize getting a couple new power outfits to make you feel really good. And just, and then visualize people saying good things to you. Like, wow, where'd you come up with that idea? That's fantastic. So glad you're on our team or whatever that looks like. Maybe even envision yourself getting an award. It has to be though, it has to be actually feeling as if you're already there. It can't, it can't be like when whatever happens, so-and-so gives you a award, so-and-so get, get, you get a promotion that you're shocked. Because if you're shocked, that says you didn't believe you could do it. That's not, that's not how, that's not how you want to reprogram yourself. You're grateful, yes, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, but not shocked. You've got to really, truly, to reprogram, imagine. Imagination is so powerful. Again, the brain does not know the difference. To undo all those negative, maybe even toxic messages that you received as a child and do this over and over and over. The brain loves, love, loves, 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 loves patterns. And, and also remember, no matter what time of day it is for you, start today. Because when, when we when we put stuff off, really, what we are, what we're doing, is resisting happiness. We're resisting happiness. We are resisting self love. We are resisting self acceptance. We are forming new agreements, saying, well, "I don't really value myself enough to do that today. I don't really feel the energy for it. I'll do that tomorrow." That is that is that is just solidifying things all over again. No matter where you are, what you're doing, if you're in the car, start with it today. I'm not saying close your eyes when you're driving. No, no, no. But you can shut off the music wherever you are, and you can start this process, even though it may not be ideal because your eyes aren't able to be shut when you're driving. In the shower, in the bathtub, definitely then. And 
Also, you can you can at the very least start with the positive affirmations and talking back to it. But as soon as you can today, remember today putting it off says not that valuable. I'm too busy. I'm too busy to take care of myself. Underneath that, in general, we actually talked to, talked about this at a conference where I was a keynote on Friday. When we put off things, we say, "Oh, I don't have the time to take care of myself. I don't have the time for a manicure, or pedicure. I don't have, to have time to go for a 15-minute walk. I don't have time to sit and read a book for 10 minutes." Underneath all that dialogue is, "I don't value myself enough to make the time for myself." That's really what's going on. So if you catch yourself with, "Oh, not today. I got this. I got that. It, today's not that. I got to pick up the kid." No, you can take one minute. You can spend that much time on the bathroom. Think about it. So here's the thing: accept yourself today. Exactly as you are, wrinkles, pounds, ability to sing, whatever you've got in your bank account, all of it. Accept yourself exactly as you are today, and visualize, and visualize yourself at your highest, highest vibration, living the life. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.